Yeah, um, I find this uh, stuff about underinvestment quite odd, given that if you compare the figures across Europe, we are spending more than any other European country by, you know, by quite some billions of pounds on our on our water infrastructure. In fact, we're spending more than sort of about about you know ten, eleven, twelve other countries put together. And if you look at like, likewise, if you look at a chart of investment over time, what you see very clearly is that after the uh, the network is privatized in, in in around 1989, you get a surge in investment. Um, and um, that's accompanied by, by leaks coming down. Now, obviously, we still have leaks, as quite a lot of people are noticing, and a hot summer is making that a lot worse because uh, because of the effects on the ground and water. But what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, the targets for leaks are set by, by the government and the regulator. Like, there is, you know, we, we, in normal circumstances, we have quite a lot of water in this country. And, uh, you know, it, and we've decided for, for decades, it's, we've decided, decided you know, everyone's agreed that it makes more sense just to pump a bit more than try and fix all the leaks, given that, you know, quite a lot of our water system has been there for, for you know, for more than 100 years and is inherited from the Victorians. In, Yes, Robert Culver, we're looking now at this chart of capital investment in the English and Welsh water companies uh, over time. And it is extraordinary. We can see a dotted line uh, in around 1989, 1990, when privatisation happened. Uh, And it looks like investment has risen since then, pretty substantially in many cases. Why have we got this narrative that investment fell? Because privatisation is evil, apparently, and um, you know, anything, anything privatised must be bad. And even if investment did rise, investment only rose because evil Margaret Thatcher sat there in Downing Street, kind of rubbing her hands and doing a Wicked Witch of the West impression, saying, you know, I'm not going to give a penny to these water companies to make the privatised companies that I'm going to turn them into look good, which would be quite something for Margaret Thatcher to do in the late 1970s when she wasn't even prime minister, uh, which is off the other side of the chart. The, the, the fact is, like... Under public ownership, the problem was that our water network was competing with everything else the government wanted to spend money on. And if you went to the Treasury at any point in those years and said, hey, I'd like to fix the pipes, but we also need to fix these schools and hospitals and other things that voters care about a lot more, the Treasury would say, well, let's do the schools and hospitals and things that voters care about. I mean, I was talking, I was, one of the civil servants involved would said, you know, the, the environment secretaries, they, they'd put water on their list of sort of bids for money from the Treasury, but it, they, it would never even get to the conversation stage. They'd admit they weren't going to get that even before the negotiations happened. It's interesting looking at all of the different uh, criticisms of the system right now. Rightly, there's been a great deal of criticism that there hasn't been any uh, uh, big investment into uh, systems to hold water, into our infrastructure to hold water in the southeast of England particularly. Uh, is that to, are the companies to blame for that? Or are there well, other... Yeah. So this is another thing. No, co- companies like to invest because they make money off of investing. What's happened? Like, everyone's, a lot of people will be saying, look, you, you know, these evil private water companies haven't built a reservoir since the 1990s. But what's happened is they've tried to build reservoirs. They put in applications for reservoirs. They've said, here are brilliant plans for reservoirs. And, you know, just as when you try to build houses, local councils and local communities have said, we don't want people building a reservoir near us. It'll, you know, it'll ruin the view. It'll flood fields. It'll, you know, lower, lower the property prices of our homes. You know, go and do it somewhere else. So, you know, Thames Water have been trying to build a reservoir near Abingdon for about 20 years and, and failing. And there's, there's, you know, there's other projects like that. You know, we are building a super sewer through London, which is a huge piece of in, investment, um, because obviously London's population has, has grown massively.